This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Research hit the wires last week that shows the racial pay gap between white and BIPOC influencers, that is, those who are black, indigenous, and people of color, is 29% overall and 35% between white influencers and black influencers. To put it another way, for every $100 a white influencer is paid, a black influencer is paid $65. I'm tempted to end the podcast right there and just angrily say to us all, press stop and go fix it. And that instruction includes me, by the way. The research was conducted by MSL, which is a public relations firm and an organization called the Influencer League. It is a digital platform that serves as an education resource for influencers. The research took place from February to September 2021 and included surveys and interviews with over 400 U.S. influencers. Each were asked to report their follower count, race, and income from brands. The insights below the top-line pay gap numbers just underlined the sadness of the reality. But what bothers me more is we've been talking about this issue in earnest for well over two to three years, and the numbers aren't any better. I'll share my thoughts on how to start to solve the problem in today's commentary. Before we get to that, let's explore a bit more about how one brand uses Tagger. It's our presenting sponsor and a complete influencer marketing software suite that allows you to find, connect, and collaborate with influencers, execute campaigns, and measure success. We've been talking to TJ Ferreira, the co-founder of Bubs Naturals, which is a health supplements company, about how he uses Tagger. What do you like most about the information you can get out of that about your your prospective influencers? Aside from the vanity metrics of the follower account and stuff like that, it gives engagement and demographic info. And the engagement and demo info is really important, obviously, to make sure that we do have overlap with our existing business unit or existing marketing strategy and everything like that. So, again, beyond just the the initial high level that most people, I think, are typically used to um, in terms of, you know, open up an Instagram profile and you just look and you say, oh, they have 3000 likes and they have 100,000 followers. Like, is that good engagement? It could be. But more consistently, it helps you look at a macro picture across their entire account, across, you know, a month's worth of posts, et cetera, that allows you to aggregate rather than the initial spot check, which I think allowed a lot of companies to fall into traps earlier on the influencer game of just say, we spot check a, you know, we spot check the last three posts and they all look good. Well, some of those engagements could have been bought. It could have been branded content. There could have been something on the back end that you don't know about. So do you have more of a macro picture and can you make an educated decision off that macro picture? And that's really, you know, what we're, what we're leveraging it for. Thanks to TJ and to Bubs Naturals for sharing their use of Tagger to learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you. Just visit jason.online slash tagger today. That's jason.online slash tagger. Now, normally in this spot, I recommend a podcast about influencer marketing, but in keeping with today's theme, I'd like to recommend a podcast of greater impact and importance. I think everyone should listen to Code Switch from NPR. That show features fearless conversations about race from journalists of color. It tackles racial and cultural issues with empathy and humor. And if you're not of color, it's just the right dose of education and slap in the face reality without making you feel guilty for being white. It was Apple Podcasts' first ever show of the year last year, and it's well worth your time. Just go to npr.org and search for Code Switch, or search for Code Switch wherever you get your podcasts. And by the way, if you know of an influencer marketing specific podcast hosted by or focused on people of color, please email me and let me know about it. These directories have lots in them, but they don't always surface every single show. You can always find me at jason at jasonfalls.com via email. I'd love to shed a light on more influencer marketing podcasts, especially ones that can help us learn and grow with regard to race and culture. How bad is the influencer pay gap? It's bad. That's next on Winfluence. (music) 
65. $65 compared to 100. That's the difference between what the average black influencer is paid versus the average white influencer. It's baffling, isn't it? Trust me, I know those of you who are black aren't surprised and are probably chuckling at the fact some white guy finds it baffling. My intention here is to bring this to a higher degree of attention and concern for those non-people of color listening, so more are motivated to help change things. When you dig into the MSL research deeper, you find that 77% of black influencers fall into the category of micro or nano influencers meaning they have under 50,000 followers. The average annual pay for influencers with that size audience, according to the research, is $27,000. 77% of black influencers are there. What percent of white influencers are at the micro or nano level? 59. That's almost 20% less that are in the lower income category of influencers. Only 23% of black influencers were in the macro influencer tier, where annual pay for influencer marketing activity was past $100,000. 41% of white influencers are earning that, again, almost 20% of a difference. 49% of black influencers say their race contributed to offers from brands that were below market value. 36% of BIPOC, inclusive of indigenous and other people of color, say they were lowballed because of their race. And when they post about race? 59% of black influencers say they felt negatively impacted financially. So the economics of our system tells them to keep their mouth shut about the problem. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what institutional generational racism does. Brands somehow think it's okay to pay influencers of color differently than whites. And then we shun those who raise their hand to point out our bigotry. I'm not going to pretend to know how to solve the influencer pay gap. I like a lot of the ideas that are out there. We do need brands to be more transparent about what they pay, but we also need creators to be transparent about their fees. We need to build resources that put a general value on various types of creator content and activity so we can get closer to a general standard for certain work. But all of those suggestions have landmines that make it hard. Who really wants to share their pricing publicly? Doesn't that put them at a competitive disadvantage? America is a free market system. It may not be fair for everyone at the table, but technically you're allowed to charge whatever you want and pay whatever you want as long as you can find a buyer or a seller that agrees. Individuals stepping up and pledging to be mindful of the gap and close it where they can is a good idea too, but the reality of it is that individuals don't always make the call. Groups do. And group dynamics can be affected by the institutional status quo we're fighting against. Education across the board is great. Brands understanding the issue and why it needs solved. Agencies knowing their role in closing the gap. Influencers having better strategies to combat the gap. All great ideas. But the one thing that will actually close the influencer pay gap as it pertains to race is this. White people must hold themselves accountable. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying individual brand or agency people are blatantly racist. I'm not saying we have to be held accountable for what some of our great-great-grandparents did. But we have to know that systemic racism evolved over centuries because too few of us, meaning white folks, too few of us stood up and insisted that it stop. Too many of us were subconsciously glad to make it someone else's problem, or think that the government will suss it all out. Well, just because slavery ended, African Americans were given the right to vote, and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 happened, that doesn't mean magically all white people and the institutions they created are suddenly colorblind. The problem is not largely individual, but individuals as a collective are the problem. As a white person, I can see that our society was set up to favor one race over all others. I don't consider myself a racist, but a lot of the opportunities and benefits a modern society brought to me in larger quantity and quality than others was because that society was originally intended to favor my race. We've been taught to think and act a certain way, and we don't even see now what we're taught 
is biased. We get defensive when someone points out that our decisions may not be inclusive or fair, instead of recognizing we might be wrong and not realize it. We have to hold ourselves accountable. Someone else is not going to fix this. All of us acting with a bit of humility and self awareness can. Educate yourself on the experience of blacks and people of color. Proactively seek to make yourself more wise to know how institutional racism impacts your everyday as much as it impacts their everyday. And then stop thinking about them as them and instead as us. We. As in together. Be intentional about including influencers of color in what you do. I can assure you there are zero, zero brands in America whose target audience is 100% white people. Prioritize the percentage that isn't and reach out to them through influencers of color and pay those influencers as they should be paid. If you're offering influencers a fee to do work, be intentional about offering the same rate for the same work and be transparent about that as much as you can be. If you can find any reason to pay an influencer of color more, do it. Even if the reason is because they can drive better awareness and engagement with that important segment of your target audience that matches his or her cultural footprint. Don't be afraid to have conversations with content creators of color about their rates or your budget. That's really the transparency that will help. And don't be afraid to have conversations with them about race, too. Tell them you want to understand their experiences and challenges more so that you can maybe help close these gaps along the way. I've told the story here before about my ex-wife, who was a rape crisis counselor once upon a time. There was a poster in her office that said, Rape will end when men become part of the solution. That stuck with me. A version of that is appropriate here. Racism will end when white people become part of the solution. And I would add, all of us, not just a few good-hearted ones. Are you an influencer of color with a story to tell? A brand manager who is trying to find ways to be more impactful here? Record a voice memo on your phone and tell me your story. Send it to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comments on a future episode. Have a different question or topic related to influence or influence marketing you'd like my take on? Inspire an episode by emailing me at that same address, jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your question as a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence.